everybody. Thank you for joining the seminar. Uh, I will talk today about systems engineering and project management and our uh, experience integrating the two, both at the Technion in uh, the systems engineering master's program and some organizations, uh, mainly in the defense industry. I will start my lecture with some discussion on project failure and will give you some examples of large projects that fail. Then I'll focus on the project front end. Uh, it's the first phase in the project life cycle before the charter is issued and before the kickoff meeting. And we will try to learn from other industries how they manage the project front end and how they integrate the systems engineering and the project management effort early on in the project life cycle. We will look at a recent study published by MIT on the tension between systems engineering and project management, and we'll try to understand how this tension can be managed. And finally, I will present the methodology that we developed at the Technion and we'll discuss some experience we have in implementing the methodology. I will try to show you the tools that we are using to support the methodology, and I hope that this presentation will help you understand how it is implemented. So we want to look at today is the high rate of failures in projects. Uh, the famous chaos study tells us that uh, projects are either successful or are terminated or challenged. Challenged projects are projects that are finished but are late or over budget or do not satisfy all the requirements. There are many uh, studies that support those results of the chaos. And if the chaos tells us that on the average about 30% of the uh, IT projects are successful and about 50% on the average are challenged, here is another point of view. The McKinsey uh, Company and the University of Oxford uh, study that was done in 2012 found that 70% of organizations participating in the study suffered from at least one project failure in the last 12 months. And if we look at these projects, and they are IT projects, information technology projects with hardware and software, we see that the average cost overrun on software projects is about 66% while the average cost overrun on non-software projects is lower, is only 43%. The total average is about 45%. In terms of schedule overrun, again, software project uh, suffer from more such overrun, 33%, compared to only 3.6% in non-software, with an average of seven. However, in terms of benefit shortfall, non-software projects suffer uh, from a huge problem with 133% of uh, uh, benefit shortfall compared to 17% in the software industry and 56% on the average. I look at uh, the study, or at another study done by uh, Price Waterhouse Cooper in 2012. We see slightly different numbers, but basically the same picture. Uh, about 30% of the projects are here at the bottom are over budget, about 30% are delivered late, and uh, projects are, are failing to deliver business benefits or to deliver the scope or to meet organizational quality standards are about 10% or less. Uh, if we want to look at specific examples, and there are so many of those, I want to focus on two examples. One is the Future Combat System, FCS, that was terminated in 2009 after spending $18 billion and, and was canceled after the demonstration phase. So no systems were produced for actual implementation. 
And another example is the Comanche helicopter that was terminated in 2004 after spending about $7 billion and zero helicopters manufactured. As I said, there are many reasons for these failures, and you can see a lot of studies focusing on different reasons. And I want to focus on a specific topic, which is the interaction between program management and systems engineering. And PMI and INCOSI together supported a study that was done at MIT, and the leader was Eric Rabinich, uh, a research scientist from MIT, and you can see that PMI took part in it along with the scientists from MIT. And the focus was on the relationship between systems engineers and project managers. And the question was, is there any unproductive tension between program management and systems engineers? And what are the results of such tension? Well, the answer is that yes, in many projects, uh, there are uh, significant unproductive types of tension between uh, project manager, program managers and systems engineers. About 30% of the respondents um, indicated that there is such tension, while only 20% or so indicated no unproductive tension. So the question is, how about the other 50%? And probably there is some tension, but it's not very significant. It's interesting that smaller organizations and large organizations are at a higher risk than medium level organization. And the answer to the main question, what should we do about it, is that we should find a way to integrate project management and systems engineering in order to lower such unproductive tension. And when we are achieving full integration, uh, there is almost none or very minimal unproductive tension, which means that integration between project management and systems engineering is becoming much better if we are able to integrate the two disciplines in the right way. Uh, the lack of integration is key source of unproductive tension, mainly in planning. And you can see here the answer to question number 23 in the uh, survey. You identify that there is unproductive tension that affects team or program performance. Please describe the applicable source of tension. And if we look at the first three, the highest sources, we see lack of integrated planning, authority not clearly defined, and conflicting practices. And I want to focus on the first one, lack of integrated planning. And if you uh, look at the chaos study, you see that they are focusing on the triangle or the uh, scope, quality, time, and cost of the uh, project. And from these four, Systems engineering is mainly focusing on the scope and the quality, mostly the product scope. In other words, the features and functions of the product and how well they satisfy the needs and expectations of the stakeholders. And the question is, how can we integrate this uh, features and function problem with the cost and schedule problem that we saw earlier in order to find a good trade-off between the three. And when asked in the survey what areas of collaboration between PMI and INCOSI could help to resolve the problem, uh, the, the first answer that came up was a mini curriculum that integrate system engineering and project management. In other words, we have to teach systems engineers how to manage projects. We have to teach project managers what systems engineering is all about. And if possible, create a standard uh, that is a joint standard of project management and systems engineering, along with tools, techniques, templates, and so on and so forth. And our effort, based on this uh, result, is to try and develop such a standard such a methodology that is focusing